This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another effects quick tip video. Today's video, I wanna talk about how to kind of create this abstract 3D particle grid right within After Effects using the built-in plugins without any third-party effects. Now you can easily create this using trap code mirror, or trap code form, or Stardust for example, it's very easy to do. But a lot of those plugins are subscription-based now, you can't buy the individual product except for Stardust. And so it gets a little bit more complicated if you're on budget. And if you need to create some abstract 3D stuff, it doesn't need to be very specific or very, very accurate. This can kind of get you by in certain cases, especially for built in effects, it's pretty cool. And you can use this effect for other things other than particle grids. You can do particle systems and abstract shapes and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and take a quick look here. And so as you can see, you get this really nice, interesting kind of particle grid. And it looks pretty decent considering there is no third party plugins like form, for example. So you can animate this, you can do whatever you want with it. And if I go ahead and turn down the quality a little bit to half and turn off some of my effects to kind of decrease the rendering times, this whole particle system is reactive to your camera. So you can fly through it, do your animations that way. And it kind of gives you a half 3D look kind of like a form grid on a real budget. There are some caveats, some downsides to this. I'll talk about that in a second, but it is pretty versatile for the built-in effects and you can use it on text layers and other layers, footage layers. And I'll show you that in a second here. So let's go ahead and hop right in to create a new composition and we'll call this tutorial demo. And so you wanna start off with some sort of black and white map, for example. So I have this texture right here, which is a completely free texture generated by the JS placement program. It's a free program which you can download down below, links in the video description. It's a pretty cool app to kind of create these abstract circuit grid maps right here for 3D texturing and height maps and stuff. But of course you can always paint your own, you can always create your own using fractal noise for example. I just have this black and white image right here. And basically similar to my last tutorial, we're gonna be using this kind of as like a height map or a displacement map. I'm gonna apply a CC ball action effect and this is the key to this whole effect right here. So drag it in and right off the bat you're gonna see no difference but if we go ahead and twist this thing you'll kind of see what it's doing it's kind of just kind of twisting it like that you can scatter the particles um, that way and if you zoom in this is actually created using some particles and we can change some, some of the stuff here um, but the key point is to change the twist property and so we're not trying to twist this whole image because we kind of want to twist it based on the luminance or the brightness or the black and white values of the image so change it to brightness and now it's going to start displacing things somewhat based on the brightness here so i turn this down and we just kind of twist this a little bit you'll see that it is twisting up and down from the tops and bottoms of the image, but you're twisting it at a different rate based on the luminance of everything here. And if I go ahead and create a camera, and we kind of fly through here, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There is some 3D depth to this now. And, but it doesn't really look like particles right now. We need to go ahead and change the grid spacing down to something smaller like two for now. And then we're gonna go ahead and decrease the ball size. And then once we do that, you're gonna start seeing, if I zoom in here, that a lot of this stuff is created using particles. Now that's pretty cool. And we can go into finer details, but um, basically you're kind of capped at this rectangular shape of the image. Um, so you can go ahead and scale this up or you can use a transform effect right before your CC ball action um, and kind of just scale things up a little bit to something like this. And that way we can just fly around and you can kind of see what it's doing here. You can create some really cool abstract grids. Now, remember it's kind of twisting towards the center. So the top and bottom sides are twisted more. So it isn't a complete flat extrusion. You're not extruding things like a height map per se. You're kind of twisting things from the center and then the outer edges get twisted more to kind of create a pseudo depth look. But it's not a very, very accurate depth map, for example, to get a cool angle. And once you're kind of happy with this, and I'm not sure how well you can see this with the YouTube compression. And the whole idea is to kind of play around with the grid spacing the ball size to kind of achieve the look that you want. Um, so we can go ahead and let me tone that down just a little bit. Now what you can do if the map is sometimes a little bit too detailed, just like anything else, you can go ahead and apply a Gaussian blur right before the map itself. And you know, just blur it by like one or two pixels. And that will kind of smooth the edges a little bit. So you get a little bit smoother transition. So for example, if I go ahead and turn up to like 20, for example, it's really gonna blur everything out and you're really gonna get smoother 
um, details that way. Like a one or two pixel blur will kind of clean things up depending on what you're doing. And if you wanted to change the particle color, you could easily apply something like a tint, for example, drag it in here. You can change the map white to like a nice blue, for an example, to get a really nice color. Now, just like any other map, you can actually animate this by animating the map. So if I go into here, I'm gonna turn off all the effects just so we can kind of see our map. And we can apply another tint effect above everything. What we can do is move forward maybe two or three seconds into the timeline. We'll set a keyframe. And we'll move to the beginning and set these colors to a perfect gray. Now remember in maps, if the color is completely neutral gray, there is no displacement, there is no change. It's kind of like a neutral ground. So we go from this neutral to this map right here. And then you can imagine in the CC ball action, you're going to see a transition between flat. And then as the map progresses and animates, you get more of an extrusion effect. Just like this as you can see over time. So you can get a really nice kind of growing extrusion look animation just by kind of animating the color that way. Now, of course, if you didn't want to use a texture, you can always do it with a fractal noise, for example. So we'll go ahead and apply a fractal noise and this will kind of generate the map for us instead of the basic type. You know what you could do to create some nice mountain terrains and stuff. Um, I'm going to change it to from soft linear to block, kind of increase contrast a little bit and then we'll go ahead and increase the scale. And we'll just copy the whole CC ball action effect into the, into the fractal noise. And we'll shut off the original one here. And you're gonna see, it looks a little bit different here, but that means we need to go ahead and play around with the grid spacing a little bit. So down to like one or zero, and then decrease the size. And if we go ahead, and I'm gonna create a separate camera here you can see what's happening here. You're creating a nice little grid and you're kind of twisting everything from the edges and the center kind of remains neutral. That's one of the downfalls of this effect. You can't really do much about it um, with the limitations, but you can get some pretty interesting particle effects and maps this way. And depending on your twist angle, you can get some very interesting effects this way. And of course, you can always play around with the brightness and the contrast and the scale of the particle system to create 3D particle terrains and anything you want to create. And it can be pretty fun. Now, in the original demonstration, to kind of create that extra depth, for example, I went ahead and duplicated another copy of it. And I just kind of manipulated it behind the original layer and I kind of added a slight twist difference. And that will kind of add a second layer of grids that way, just to kind of give it some more depth. And so now if you look closely, we get a little bit more depth. We can kind of fill in some of the extra missing spaces there. And for this one, you can even tone down the different types of ball size, maybe it's a little bit smaller um, and change the grid spacing down to like five, for example. And that will just kind of fill everything in just a little bit, just give a little bit more depth. So one of the downfalls of using this effect is that it doesn't really support depth of field. So you're gonna have to fake it using a the field map, for example, which is what I did in the original demonstration here. I created this black and white map right here and used that map to generate a depth of field using the camera lens blur under the blur map right here to kind of fake that depth of field. And then I added some color correction, grain, RGB split, stuff like that to create this kind of look. Um, but you can create some pretty interesting grids this way. And it doesn't have to be a grid. You know, you can play around with it, add different effects like vector blurs and stuff to create really cool abstract shapes and strings. And remember, it doesn't need to be just a grid or a fractal grid or whatever. It can be text layers, footage. So I have this footage of a face right here. And the key is to use elements with a lot of contrast and the background should be kind of a neutral, darker color. So you can really avoid getting some of the artifacts. But in this footage, if you apply CC ball action, you can create a pretty cool abstract, almost like music video tech effect here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this camera and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new camera here. So we have our footage with some CC ball action. I'm gonna go ahead and change the twist property to brightness once again. And if we twist it, you're going to kind of see that we get some interesting depth tone it down to like two or even like one, for example. And then we go ahead and decrease the ball size and turn off our original demo. You can really see how we can kind of create like a pseudo depth map. You can zoom in, get really abstract with it. You can create some pretty cool like music video effects or digital 
um, sci-fi look this way. And if you want to change the color again, apply a tint. You can apply all your glows and do whatever you want this way, but it's a very cool way to kind of create, you know, kind of a pseudo depth particle grid screen for whatever reason. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsor over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have an amazing team to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code Dojo at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the show. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it for this quick tip video. If you guys create anything cool with CC Ball Action, let me know in the comments down below and for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.